Um, Jennifer Rosser, is she here? Where are you, Jennifer? She's going to introduce Phil Carvel. Now, why you come up? Come on up, Jennifer. How many people here are skiers? Skiers, you know, snow? Okay, just hold that thought. Oh, I'm just going to sort of ad lib about my dad, so I'll, I'll let him introduce himself. But yeah, I was really excited to come to this event, um, primarily because my brother and my husband and I got to spend uh, two days with my dad. He's a third generation San Franciscan, so his, grand, his grandmother got on a ship and came over from Germany, worked in the Presidio. Um, you know, I didn't grow up here, my dad did, and I was really fascinated and excited to spend two days with him, you know, wandering through the city and having him uh, explain to us why Lincoln High School was such a great place. We looked at what size elementary school, and it just really gave me a, a sense of that the 50s and the 60s were not that long ago, you know? I mean, it, in, for me, it's happy days and it's movies, but for him, you know, seeing the streets that he walked on and going past Lincoln High School, suddenly it was real. You know, I had heard of Lincoln High School and there it was. And now I learned tonight even more about what an amazing place it is. But, um, so my dad, he finished in 1957 and uh, he was a city boy, as I said, three generations, but he loved, his father would take him camping uh, in the Trinity Alps and he developed this love of the outdoors. And so before he finished at Lincoln, he worked for the Forest Service. So he'd go up and I think he said he would um, prune trees and, and be in the outdoors, completely different from his urban life that he had in San Francisco. Um, but what I think really I love about my dad is that he has this real sense of adventure. So here's a city boy who goes out into the mountains and decides to work for the Forest Service. And after doing that, decides that he's going to um, go into the military. And I think it was a, maybe not a really well thought through decision. Um, but he went back and he was in the Marine Corps and did that for three years. I guess at that time he had to serve, which I think is very honorable. And uh, came back and all of a sudden he had a family. So my brother and I, and he has two kids to support. So he went to UC Berkeley, and I guess what I, my point here is, he came from a, you know, an immigrant family, three generations. He's the first person to actually finish high school in his family. Went, did service in the military, came back, uh, went to UC Berkeley, studied forestry, um, and then went on to get an MBA to support these two little mouths that he had to feed. So. Um, and he went on and, and got a, his first job was with IBM, so I think a lot of people would be thrilled to get into a corporation and work their way up the chain, but I think my dad has a real adventurous spirit, and he wants, to, I, my experience is that he loves to eat up life. He loves to take risks. He's been a, a serial entrepreneur, so rather than staying at uh, IBM, which if you want to do that for 30 years, that's wonderful, but his choice was to start a computer company and you know at a very young age in his 30s started um, selling these huge mainframe computers um, and just did a variety of entrepreneurial things that I think take a lot of guts and really show his character. Another thing that I, I remember, we, so we moved after he worked for IBM, he was hired by Fiberboard um, for a variety of reasons, maybe he'll go into some details, but um, we ended up living in North Star Ski Resort in the 70s and still being a young man, and I remember going up the, the Siberia chair with my dad, and he said he was gonna do a backflip off this kangaroo jump. And sure enough, there's my dad and my brother following him. <laughs> no experience whatsoever, right? Not a, not a gymnastics a gymnast or anything, and he does this backflip before he crashed. crashed. <laughs> but to me, that just showed his desire to just do stuff, you know, to eat up life. He also, um, Without any training, went and did the ride and tie. I think I was in sixth grade. And he jumped on a horse with a friend of his, and his friend ran, and he rode his horse, and they did this ride and tie event. So I guess, I guess what I really admire about my dad is he's just go for it, eat up life attitude. So after you know, a certain number of 
successful careers, and I won't go too far into it. I asked him yesterday, I said, so, Dad, what, um, what are you most proud of with your, with your career and your achievements? And he said, well, I, I hope it's that I was a great dad to you and Mike. And uh, I can mm -hmm. say that you definitely were. So that's my dad. <laughs> Would you do me a favor, Phil, and mention North Star a lot so everybody understands why I mentioned skiing? <laughs> Most of you probably know North Star is a ski resort. Um, it was a, I was the president of North Star in the mid-1970s, and uh, that's why I guess Phil said, or David said, how many people are skiers? Um, one of the things I... I guess listening to the intro for the first time from my daughter is that uh, you can gather I've done a lot of stupid things. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you very much for this honor. Um, I don't know who um, nominated me, but I want to thank that person. Thank you very much. Um, I know Isaac deserves, you know, his induction. Um, I want to thank the selection committee for lowering the bar a bit. In, in my case, thank you very much. Um, I know I'm going to forget, I, you know, you, in these type of things, you think of what, what you're going to say and you don't want to look too stupid and so on and so forth. I know I'm going to forget a lot of the, the things I, I want to say, but um, in the 50s, San Francisco, which is an incredibly marvelous place, it's changed quite a bit. In the 50s, it was a fully functioning town. It had a produce district, it had tanneries, it had a steel production, it had made its own beer, um, slaughterhouse district, it was the produce district, it was just like a fully functioning, wonderful city. And for kids, you know, if you had a bicycle and a token for the streetcar, the world was yours. There was just like nothing you couldn't do. It was a fabulous city. And I'm so proud of uh, all the people I uh, went to school with and uh, well, I thought we were very cool, but I can tell from the audience tonight the, the, the school has continued to grow and be more exciting and be more hygienic. And I just compliment you all, all the new students, whatever, teachers, you've made an incredible school out of Lincoln. Thank you very much. Um, like my daughter said, um, I graduated, obviously, I went to Cal. And, left for the mountains and for many years I lost touch with school um, and then after a while I started to get the Lincoln log for some reason and I started to uh, kind of reminisce on all the people that I had missed and all of a sudden Jeff Stahl shows up today and, and Bill, I followed Bill via the Lincoln log for a long time. Izzy, I followed the Lincoln log through you and, uh, and then today I had one of the most marvelous um, days in my life. And, I've had some marvelous days. <laughs> but uh, today I just met with three of my Lincoln High School, two guys with whom I went to uh, Lawton School, and then one guy that I met in high school. And it was just like recounting all the old days, the fun, the stupid things we did, the wonderful things we did. And uh, I'm so appreciative of all the friends that I had, all the people, some of whom have passed, but. Uh, we just had a wonderful school. Um, regarding stupid things, uh, <laughs> I've done many, and I'm sure many of you have too. Uh, the, uh, there was a reference here to uh, AI tonight. She made it, and artificial intelligence. I remember reading a book by Michael Lewis. I can't remember the name of it, but it was about two brilliant Israelis. Uh, who were philosophers, mathematicians. I, some of you may have read the book. I can't remember the name. But uh, there was a passage in the book about 
if you were in the room and if you didn't realize that, um, whatever the guy's name was, we'll make up a name, if you didn't realize that he was the smartest guy in the room in five minutes, you were really stupid. You know? <laughs> and so when it was referenced to uh, AI, I remember it just flashed in my head just a few minutes ago. Um, at one of the conferences, this brilliant Israeli was asked, uh, why don't you study artificial intelligence? And he looked at the guy and said, we don't study artificial intelligence. We study human stupidity. <laughs> Which I thought was wonderful. Anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for this, uh, this award. Isaac, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, hearing all about your speech, etc. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody who made this school so wonderful. And I want to thank everybody who has made via your contributions, the world a better place. Thank you very much.